Currently, Republicans and Democrats are opponents in the presidential elections three weeks from now. In such a turbulent time, you might forget that many times Democrats and Republicans work together. They share drinks and ideas, among others, on the future of the chemical control legislation in the USA. This resulted in a long-awaited and very special act, the Frank R. Lautenberg Chemical Safety for the 21st Century Act. This act amends the primary chemicals management law of the USA, the Toxic Substances Control Act. I'm honored to discuss this important modernization of Tosca and its impact on industry with Jeff Morris of USEPA and Sean Clancy of Evonik. Jeff and Sean, welcome. Uh, you know, of course, that uh, Chemcon is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. Uh, we start the whole week with all the interviews with the same question to all of the interviewees. What did you do in 1996? Well, I've been with EPA for 24 years. So 20 years ago, I was in my first position at EPA in the pesticides program. Uh, in fact, I was there 20 years ago when the Food Quality Protection Act was signed. The last uh, major environmental uh, law that EPA uh, received since the recently amended TSCA. 20 years ago, I was working for a different firm, but it was only two years after I began doing what I do now in regulatory affairs. So I was still learning about the intricacies of TSCA at that time and figuring out how to make it work for my company. And what are the main game changers of the uh, new act? Well, there are several. I mean, the first is that the EPA now has a duty to uh, review and evaluate existing chemicals. Um, while we always had the uh, ability to do so, we didn't have the, the actual requirement that we do so, that's one. The second is that for new chemical substances, we must make an affirmative determination as to whether or not the chemical substance may present or does present or is not likely to present risks to humans or the environment. And then I think that finally there are some important provisions for the substantiation of confidential business information that are outlined. Um, so those three things I think are, are three, um, three big game changers in the amended TSCA. The Toxic Substance Control Act didn't have a very convenient name. Um, but as people got to know it, they also didn't understand how it worked, so they uh, had a high level of confidence. So uh, I think there's a number of benefits that Jeff has mentioned that are, are game changers in the law. One thing I think is a, an important game changer is having a name that people can recognize pertains to chemical safety. Jeff, you identified an active inventory now. Uh, what's next? So once we identify that active inventory, um, let's say somewhere between 10 and 20,000 chemicals. Again, I'm just making this up, we don't know. But once we do, we'll have to develop a process for going through that active inventory to identify those chemical substances that are high priority for risk evaluation. We're developing a prioritization rule that we'll issue as proposed in December and then final in June that will outline that process. This is important because once we identify a chemical substance as high priority for risk evaluation, the law requires that we move immediately to risk evaluation, the three-year clock starts for it. Some companies have stepped up and uh, have already volunteered a chemical proactively. Uh, so that was something that is an uh, unusual part of the law uh, that gives a company an uh, interesting way to get involved early. So I, I find that to be a very interesting thing to have the opportunity to take advantage of. Well, Sean, what would be the benefits for industry to initiate an evaluation of one of your chemicals? Well, if there's a significant question about a chemical uh, that is in the market now that would be well addressed by going through a risk assessment, uh, getting started earlier may be a business advantage to a company, so it gives them more certainty about how the chemical might be viewed down the road. Or perhaps they have some information that uh, is uh, closely held by them that they want the agency to be able to consider right away. So getting involved with the process early may be viewed as a business advantage. And once chemicals are in the risk evaluation process, how does it work at EPA, uh, Jeff? The risk evaluation process will start with a scoping document that will lay out um, all the known and foreseen conditions of use of that chemical. So it lays out the uses, the database, the framework for the assessment. 
that would be a starting point. That will go out for public comment. Then we'll begin the process of actually writing the risk evaluation. That will then go out as a draft document. Um, it may go out for independent expert peer review at the same time. We'll take comment on it, take peer reviewers' comments, public comments, and then work to develop the final risk evaluation, which is something different from the risk assessments we had done previously because a risk evaluation per the statute must include a determination as to whether or not the chemical poses unreasonable risk. Um, risk assessments typically just stop short of any determination and left that to the, the policy makers, um, but now the policy makers and the assessors will have to work together to come up with a risk determination that can only be based on, on risk considerations and not consider other non-risk factors. In the new risk evaluation process, all of the known or foreseen uses must be part of that assessment in our interpretation of the law. So that means that these risk evaluations by and large are going to be much broader in scope than were the previous TOSCA work plan risk assessments. In order to obtain more information on the chemicals, um, could industry submit the data they recently developed for example under REACH? Uh, if that's question is to me, then uh, my understanding is, uh, yeah, uh, that we uh, could make it available. Uh, we also know that the database, uh, the things like robust summaries, are already available to the agency. We do hope that the agency will take advantage of that as much as possible. But as Jeff mentioned, the scoping document, for example, where they identify uh, the, uh, the basis for how they view a chemical uh, today, uh, we would certainly be taking a look at that. And if we identify that we have information that they may not have access to or may not have, we would want to make it available to them. It certainly makes sense for us to have the agency have the best information possible. Uh, we want them to have a good scientific basis for their decision making. Right. I mean, the statute um, says that we should um, use uh, readily available data. Well, for us, readily available means that it exists now. Um, and so we would want to use those data for our assessment. If uh, your chemicals are on the Tosca work plan, uh, a manufacturer has to pay 50% of the evaluation cost. If you initiate it yourself, uh, you have to pay 100% of the cost. Who is responsible for keeping track of the cost and how is the bill divided over the parties that need the risk evaluation? As far as how, say, through, uh, in a consortia, how uh, the cost would be distributed amongst the various members, that's subject to negotiation within the consortia. So uh, there's various models that have been used for consorting in the past, ranging from market share uh, to uh, company sales, uh, and I'm sure there's other uh, models also. Uh, so again, that's up to them. Thank you both for all the useful information. Um, a lot of developments ahead, which I'm sure we all keep a tap on. Speaking about the tap, for those of you that will have substances on the list and are invited to join this exclusive party, please be aware that part of this bill will be for industry. It takes the meaning of going Dutch to a complete new level.